Made in day, baby. All right, guys, welcome. If you don't know, I'm Manny Martinez. I'm the owner and founder of Tropical Glitz. I started this business eight years ago. I've been blessed to be successful, and I think a lot of hard work, dedication, and being hungry. And without the great team that I have, including amazing artists like Mercado, we wouldn't be in this situation. We wouldn't be in this class. Now, today we're talking about Paint Tricks 2.0. And then the biggest thing is we want to teach you guys anything and everything that has to do about paint, but the fundamentals and the foundation of paint, that's the really important thing that everybody needs to know because, my God, how many stuff, you know, you see cars around sometimes, mm -hmm. color theory, and exactly. it's the biggest mm -hmm. thing. So, but besides all that, let's go and introduce a good friend of mine, yeah. Mr. McCallow, Jonathan McCallow, all the way from San Diego, mm -hmm. California. What's up, dude? How's How it going, you? guys? Uh, my name's Jonathan Mercado. Been painting for the last, I would say, 12 years, more or less, striping, custom painting. Been knowing Manny since like around 2016, way before he even had a storefront. So visited California, brought me some Metal Flake, uh, gave me some Metal Flake to try out, loved the product. Been with Tropical Glitz uh, ever since. And we built this, this uh, friendship and, and uh, yeah. uh, business relationship throughout the years. And I'm, I'm here for the long run with Tropical Glitz, and, and it's an honor to be out here with you guys. It's very uh, rewarding to, to, uh, to be able to teach for you guys. And I want to be able to spread some of my knowledge that I've been able to pick up throughout the years and been able to rub elbows with, with some of the best painters yeah. in the business. And, and it's just my, my way to kind of give back because, you know, I was, at, I was in your guys' uh, shoes at one point. I said, didn't know much about custom painting, nothing at all, and, and was able to soak up a lot of stuff throughout the years. So that's what we're here for. So... The first thing that we're going to talk about, as you guys can see in all you guys' folder, you got the color wheel and all that. We're not going to get super, super crazy in depth. We're going to run through it, you know, just the basics mm. of uh, color theory and just like what colors go with, with what, because I think that's a very fundamental piece yeah. in custom painting. You know, even though it's like, uh, you don't use it to, as, as in depth as, as you would imagine, but it's, it, comes, it plays a big role into custom painting, you know, because you know, you're able to create pieces like this. And like this, I like, you, bro. you know, so all this goes back into, into color theory. So, so it's really important. You have in colors, you have your primary colors. It's three colors. What are your primary colors? It's called red, blue, yeah, and yellow. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's funny. We, yeah, yeah. yeah well, it's crazy because yeah, I hate to put them on the spot yeah, yeah. I, because I forgot. And I'm, I'm the one that makes the paint. It's important to understand your primary colors and then when you mix your primary colors then you get your secondary colors and then once you start mixing your secondary colors you get uh what's the third one called let me see here there you go what is it territory Tertiary colors Tertiary. yeah what Tertiary. exactly whatever he said i can't pronounce it because my accent's gonna kill it Cubano. <laughs> i know killed it so these are really important because these are the colors this is how i make colors right because i start with some basic colors and you're like damn how is it you made a a, a factory color so dope Besides all the stuff that I have access to, but I understand color theory, I understand warm colors, light colors, and all that. Mm -hmm. These are really important because once you understand your foundation of color theory, it makes it a lot easier when it comes to painting. This is used not in custom painting, this is used in art, everywhere. This is the foundation of everything that has to do with paint. Doesn't matter if it's manufacturing paint, painting, anything, mm -hmm. this is what Everything that has to do with color comes from. This is your phone. And like I said, we, we're going to uh, cover hue, saturation. That's a, a, that all relates to, to, to the colors that one would use for like the candies and all that. And for like hues, like I said, I, the easiest way I could break it down is like if you're using candy concentrates, the, the more candy you put into it, the more saturated and the more darker it could be. So it's all that ties into the, the, the candy products that we're going to use. And with just off of two different colors, one color, you could make like five different shades, you know? So just off of one paint job, you can use two colors and you can get all these different blends, you know? So it's not just, oh, just stick to one color. You can make different batches and you can make it super intense, very light. So it, it, it's, it's, it's endless uh, possibilities with, with the candies. Yeah, and then value is a good example. So let's say you wanna make gray, but you only got black and white, start dropping a little black into your your white and then that's how you start playing around with the color and that all falls into the whole thing when it comes value value is how you manipulate colors playing with white black and then sometimes you can make white black and make a gray and that you can drop that into another color and that's how you manipulate the color to kind of give you the tones and the values of everything mm -hmm. and then temperature is the same thing temperature well temperature is more like <clears throat> if you hit the slide throw okay that we talked about hue value all right there you go temperature 
Temperature breaks down into two parts. You have cool and warm. And, but and a prime example of warm, of a warm yeah. color scheme is this, your reds, your oranges, the golds. This is all leading towards the warm side. And with the cool colors, you got more of the purples, blues, greens. So it's either hot or warm, you know? Mm -hmm. And like I said, you could, you could either choose hot or warm, and there's it is many different combinations that you could do. And another thing too, we talk about when it, we talk about fading and values and stuff, look at, Look, all right, let's compare these two. Look at the difference when it comes to the fading, how you see the, how it fades from one color to another. That's another thing when it comes to different saturations and hues, how you can, you're able to manipulate the color to give you that tone and warmth to effect to it. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is really important. You see monochromatic. Jonathan loves, oh, I would say monochromatic. Yeah. How many, yeah, pretty much, yeah, all of, almost all a, your stuff. A lot of my paint jobs are monochromatic. So mm -hmm. he's gonna talk about, he owns a beautiful 63. 63 Buick Riviera. The blue yeah. one, mm -hmm. and we'll bring up, you know what? Papi, do me a favor, go to the media room and get me Jonathan's Riviera that's hanging on the wall. Mm -hmm. So Jonathan paints in monochromatic. Jonathan, give me a breakdown. What is monochromatic? Well, What's monochromatic, it's, it's essentially just all the same tones within the same color palette. So like, for example, these two boards, these are all monochromatic. They all stay within the greens. And like I said, I'm a big fan of, of, of doing these color schemes because like going back to what I said earlier, just off of two candies, you create like five different tones and make the paint job look that much busier. Like I said, it's a lot going on, but yet it's simple, easy in the eye. And like, so this is what I'm very known for. Exactly, like prime example of my own personal car, my Riviera. It's all in blue tones. Just, just on that paint job, I used two different colors and it was a you know, cobalt blue and an oriental. So off of those two colors, I made all the different tones. So one would think I've, I used like 10 different tones. So you can really, it's, it's, it's a lot of uh, possibilities that you get off of the, these, these candies, you know, and, and, this, and this is my favorite style of uh, color schemes. Everybody's yeah. gonna have your own styles, right? You guys are gonna have your own mm -hmm. styles and then you start defining who you are as an artist. Mm -hmm. And you have to be comfortable with what you do because everybody has a particular style of painting. Mm -hmm. And don't be scared of thinking outside the box. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing. Symmetrical and asymmetrical. So, symmetrical means it's it's they, they both mirror to, to both sides. Yeah. And I'll show you, you know, what a good example. These are symmetrical. So in the custom paint world, symmetrical, it, it, this leads to, to these uh, style of boards yeah. right here. So those are typical paint jobs on cars. You, you, you normally see symmetrical, so you want one side to match to the other side. But also, like, oh. but also with asymmetrical, it being this one, it's a little, it's not, you don't have a, a center point. As, as, as you're not mirroring anything. It's more free form. You know, you don't rarely, see, you rarely see this on cars, yeah. but it's like some people are willing to take a risk and have an asymmetrical car and just a few cars out there uh, that really made a big impact having yeah. this kind of style of layout. You know, so it's very versatile, but what we're gonna be doing for this class is gonna be symmetrical, and this is actually gonna be our template for, for the class. So I, I try to simplify it as much as I can, and this is more or less like the style that I grew up learning how to do. This is uh, very inspired by Sal Manzano. Like, so I'm really into the big blends, you know, just off of like two, 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 three colors, you could definitely make it very busy, you know? And it's not, like I said, it's very simple, but it's the blends which really fills up the paint yeah. job. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, he, uh, he, was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday. Yesterday he, he goes, hey, this was the first panel I did. Mm -hmm. He goes, Manny, what do you think on the board I painted? And I was busy setting up the class, setting up ACs. You know, I have to make sure you guys are having the best experience and, and and make sure everybody's cool. And I go, you know what I love about it? The blend, right? Because I'm not looking at the, I'm not looking at the tape. I'm not, I said the blend straight up because that is such a simple technique, but so complicated to it's put it off effective. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the mm -hmm. problem because anybody can try to do a blend, but it looks blotchy or it's uneven. And he has this beautiful soft blend. And I told him that's, that's my favorite part because it was pulled off perfect. Yes. For, for these boards, actually I used, it was gold, orange, and red, but um, actually with the red, you can necessarily take out the, you can take out the orange, and by shooting red over gold, you create an orange, and you know, you could just simplify down to, to uh, two colors, you know, but if you really want certain colors to be heavily orange, you use the candy orange. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, but, oh, I'm sorry. I said, but with those, with the candies, like since they're transparent, you overlay them, you create different colors. You know, and it goes back to the color where you make certain colors, yeah. and you're able to achieve uh, certain colors as well. Yeah, the biggest thing is, dude, um, understanding 
what the heck you're trying to do. Now, one thing I want to tell you guys and everybody online, don't be scared of messing up, you know? Um, I, lo I Like I said earlier, I learned by books, right? A great painter is not a painter that knows exactly what to do. Sometimes the best painter is the one that screws up in a booth or screws up a project, knows how to save the project right there on the spot. Because that's what, what it really means. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, hey, I, I screwed this up. All right, mm -hmm. cool, no worries, bro. Give it five minutes, do this, do that. Or the same thing in production. You get a drip and you get mm -hmm. tape, you wait for a tack up and you put a piece of tape on and you pull that drip off and then shoot more clear and problem solved. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's what really like, well, Manny said, so you guys have to be, you guys got to be willing to, to fail and mess up. Oh yeah. Because it's not going to come out perfect the first shot. And like I said, that's why we're here. We're guys, we're guys going to walk you through it as best as we can, and to, to get a better understanding of custom painting, taping, layout, and but like I said, uh, we all mess up. I mess up my, my, myself. Uh, but what, what makes us skillful is like learning how to fix the, the screw ups. Yeah. You know, so you get put in situations where you're doing a, a job. And it's like a do or die situation. Something happens, you just got to figure out how to fix it. Mm -hmm. You know, you just can't freak out. It's like, oh, that's it. Throw. Because at the end of the day, you need to still finish the job and turn it in. You know, so you'll get put in different situations where, you know, it's not going to go perfect. You know, but if you follow the, the, the products to, to their instruction and all that, it should come out as best as possible. But sometimes, like I said, we're human. You know, <laughs> we all mess up. We do. <laughs> all right. If you enjoy what we're doing, please don't forget like subscribe and follow we do this to educate you guys and it's all about the game